Integrity is not easy to come by in journalism today. The late German journalist and author Udo Ulfgott is an example of a newsman who was concerned with genuine truth-telling in the face of immense professional pressure to do otherwise. We consider one of the most important yet, at least in the English-speaking world, little-known deep state whistleblowers in recent history on this episode of the Memory Hole Blog Report. For MHB Report, this is James Tracy. If one looks at Udo Ulfkat's Wikipedia entry, they might dismiss him as a mere conspiracy theorist with a book to sell. In fact, Ulfkat held a doctoral degree, was employed as a journalist, newspaper editor, war correspondent, and foreign policy expert who worked at some of Germany's leading news outlets. He was also an accomplished author with one dozen books in print. Bought journalists, Ulfkat's public confession to effectively being a clandestine instrument of a transnational intelligence network was his last and most well-known book, with translations in nine languages. Yet when it came time for the English translation of the key expose to appear, it was set for publication by an obscure West Coast publisher called Tayan Lane, which repeatedly delayed publication. Then the publisher suddenly disappeared. MHB's attempts to touch base with Tay and Lane's staff in 2017 were left unanswered. A few days after Ulfkot's untimely death, Tay and Lane's Twitter feed went dark, and its website is now up for sale. Ulfkot's experiences and observations as a compromised journalist did not involve employment with a single spy agency per se. Rather, he was immersed in a web of multiple overlapping relationships with individuals and institutions that began when one of his graduate school professors took him under his wing. Ulfkott was to discover a powerful network of American influence permeating not only government but also non-governmental diplomatic and philanthropic organizations and academia, all of which relied on Germany's most prominent journalists and in turn the news organizations they were employed by for their information gathering and propaganda efforts. Now you ask, what have I done for intelligence agencies? So please see, most of the journalists you see in foreign countries, they claim to be journalists, and uh, they they might be journalists, European or American journalists, but uh, many of them, like me in the past, are so-called non-official cover. That's what the Americans call that. I have been a non-official cover. Non-official cover means what? It means you, you too work for an intelligence agency. You help them if they want you to help them, but they will never, never find, when they find out that you are not only a journalist, but a spy too, Um, They will never say, oh, this was one of our guys. They will not know you. That means non-official cover. So uh, I have helped them in several situations, and uh, I feel ashamed for that too now. Uh, Referencing a fellow foreign war correspondent, Ulfkott remarks how freedom of the press in the West was once the freedom of 200 rich people to publicize their opinions. Now, however, it isn't 200 anymore, that number has been reduced to four or five. Elsewhere, Ulfkott notes, when journalists from the leading German media walk in and out of lobbying organizations like the Atlantic Bruch, the Trilateral Commission, the Munich Security Conference, the Bilderbergers, the Aspen Institute, or the Federal Academy for Security Policy, or even become members of these organizations as quote-unquote media leaders, then a red line has been crossed because some of these journalists are for sale. They, for example, let themselves be invited on five-star vacations, and afterward, they publish uncritical reports praising their hosts. This year, 2020, Udo Ulfkott would have been 60 years old. He is said to have died of a heart attack in January of 2017, while awaiting the English translation of bought journalists that never materialized. 
The circumstances of Ulfgott's passing are questionable since for over a decade he was the persistent target of German government surveillance and harassment, in part due to a previous book he published examining Germany's Federal Intelligence Service. Ulfgott also planned for bought journalists to be part of a trilogy exposing the European mass media. Ulfgott's first-hand experience as a coddled journalist provides researchers with a template for considering the extent to which prominent U.S.-based journalists are similarly compromised. The earmarks transcend national borders. They are employed at the most prominent news outlets. They are recipients of abundant awards, accolades. They are board members, advisors, or affiliates at major non-governmental or philanthropic organizations. And they often have access to the highest figures in government and the private sector. For revealing to the public the extent of the European news media's wide-ranging deceit and corruption, Ulfcott may have paid the ultimate price. In 2019, bought journalists, however, finally saw the light of day in the English-speaking world when the translation rights to the book were purchased by the independent, California-based Progressive Press, which released the book under the title Prestitutes, embedded in the pay of the CIA. Alongside evidence such as that, which was collected by the Church Committee hearings in the mid-1970s, Ulfcott's testimony is indisputable proof of the extent to which our news media and in turn public opinion have been captured by the forces governing from the shadows. Given Ulfcott's journalistic stature, bought journalists rest among the most compelling evidence we have of Operation Mockingbird's endurance, intensification and proliferation on an international scale. In the 2020s especially, the efficacy of such messaging is essential for elites, as the world faces an economic reset where news and opinion management figure centrally. If you appreciate this work, please consider liking and sharing this video, as well as becoming a sponsor of our work on Patreon at patreon slash memoryhole. For memoryholeblog.org, this is James Tracy.